What's up my friends who are watching hard for the audio stuff? And Sony have announced the A93, which is awesome news. And the, the big news, don't even need to tell you about it because you already know, this has a global shutter. That's awesome. So I thought it'd be nice to dig into the video specs because that's what this channel is all about. So nothing stills related. Let's just break down the video specs for this camera. Before we do the obligatory housekeeping, do get subscribed, it means a lot to me. Hit the bell, helps the channel grow and uh, puts a smile on my face. Uh, and also I wanted to preface this video by saying, uh, I, I really appreciate Sony. I, I appreciate them putting this technology in these consumer cameras, albeit expensive consumer cameras. Um, so I just wanted to say that before um, anyone goes nuts in the comments and, um, and it seems that I'm being negative about this camera, which, you know, um, we'll see. But I do appreciate a global shutter, awesome. What's not to like? So except for the awesome global shutter, which means no more rolling shutter jelly effect, this camera largely has similar specs to, uh, video specs anyway, to the Sony a7 IV. I'll pop all of them here. So if you can just have a look there if you want to. It's largely similar. It's a 6K down sample, which gives you a really nice uh, detailed image, um, which I, yeah, I found from using the a7 IV. Apart from that, apart from the uh, the raw output, of course, it doesn't have that same quality, but the a7S III does have the same raw output, which I'm shooting on right now. We also get 120p at 4K with no crop, which is nice, but bear in mind that is subsampled, so it's not a one-to-one -one pixel readout or downsampled. So the 120p footage won't look quite as good as something like the a7S III, which is a one-to-one -one pixel readout. So I imagine there's lots of gear acquisition syndrome floating around with this camera, but before you pre-order, consider this. Have you ever noticed rolling shutter in your footage, honestly? Also, has that negatively impacted your footage to the point where a client was disappointed? And finally, have you ever lost work because of rolling shutter? I suspect the answers to these questions are no, never, no, and no. So that is worth considering uh, before you pre-order, I think. Something else to consider is when switching to a global shutter, as opposed to conventional style, it's the impact it can have on dynamic range. And, you know, and that's just because of the way that it reads the sensor rather than top to bottom. It's every pixel all at once. And the thing about this is Sony didn't mention anything about the dynamic range that we can expect. So that's curious. It's worth noting that the base ISO in S-Log3 is 2000, which is pretty high for a Sony Alpha camera of this, of this day. The Sony A7S3 is 640 and the A7 IV is 800, just off the top of my head. However, um, I think it's easy to kind of blow this out of proportion and go, oh my God, you know, it's, it's gonna be so noisy. Um, it's probably not gonna be the case because the way it works with um, the equivalent ISOs with S-Log3 is you can, you can calculate it as around two stops uh, lower. So uh, ISO 800 on the a7 IV will be the equivalent of ISO 200 once, uh, once you've done the log conversion. So this is, is kind of high, but it's kind of the equivalent of a base ISO of ISO 500. Another noteworthy thing is this is not a dual gain or you know dual native ISO camera. So this means that potentially it could be maybe maybe not a low light camera um, with the global shutter change with the higher native ISO and then it's not dual gain stage like the um, like the A7S3 is. Uh, so yep, yeah, so if that's important to you, if low light is important to you. Um, you know, that's just going on what we have at the moment. Obviously I haven't tested it. I haven't had one in my hands, but uh, you know, you just have to look at the specs and wonder, but um, what do you think? And then we have price and I'm sure you've seen what it is. So I'm not gonna kind of quote exact prices, but it, you're looking, you're probably gonna be dropping 6,000 euros, dollars, pounds, around that kind of amount. So it's a, it's a big, it's a big amount for a camera. And so, You've got to be a hybrid shooter who shoots sports 
uh, and occasionally does video really to make use of this because um, if you're thinking, great, this has a global shutter, I'm gonna use this, it's gonna be like a mini cinema camera. Yeah, it, it can be, but I think, you know, I think better options are things like uh, Zcam. I think they do some stellar value for money. Uh, also Blackmagic, the new pocket cinema camera 6K. Outstanding value, you can buy nearly three of those, or, you know, two and a bit for the price of uh, the A9 III. Even something like the A7 IV, will give you almost what this <laughs> A93 does. Let me know uh, other suggestions um, down below, that would be good. Obviously these are suggestions for if you are mainly a video guy. So um, I'm, I'm just trying to say, you know, don't, maybe don't go and buy this as your primary camera when there are so many other really good options for shooting video. So should us video guys be excited about this camera? It's a, it's a yes and a no. Um, no, because I personally don't think it's going to appeal to video first people. Um, but yes, in the fact that uh, this, I think, is a really good sign that this is going to trickle down to, I'm hoping, the FX series and maybe even the A7S series, um, you know? So Global Shutter, I'll say once again, incredible. Incredible. However, Higher bit depths, higher resolution, more dynamic range, better color science, I think will make a greater impact on your video quality than global shutter on the whole. Just my opinion. So for me, a definite pass of a camera, as incredible as this sounds and, and as incredible as the technology is, you know, we just have to wait until it trickles into the FX series, into the A7S series. And hopefully by then Sony will have had time to work on the base ISO. Maybe they can lower that a bit. And um, there's exciting things coming from Sony for sure. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this really quick opinion and uh, quick look at the video specs of the Sony A9 III. Are you getting this? Let me know. Uh, do your opinions vary to mine? Definitely um, load up the comments and let's get a discussion going. I'm interested if this is gonna become, you know, a, a video guy's favorite. Let me know. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. I'll see you.